and welcome back. I am so excited about today's video because it is going to be the first in a new series I'm starting here on my channel. It is going to be called After the First Impressions, which basically is just a makeup updates video, but I like the catchy title. <laughs> I'm going to start including these at the end of the month and it is going to be a wrap up of an entire month's worth of reviews, either that entire month or continuing in a little bit to the previous month before that one just so I've really tested out those products for at least a full month and I'm giving you a really solid review of how I've been feeling about those products. So that's how they're gonna be structured after this video. Since this is the first, I've done a lot of first impressions, a lot of reviews on my channel. I have a lot of product to choose from. I have an entire little basket here full of products that I have picked out to talk about. Of course, I can't talk about everything I've reviewed. I mean, I've been doing this for almost two years now, so <laughs> it would be a lot of product to go through. I will definitely try to sprinkle in some older things in future videos. I just don't want to overwhelm you too much today. <laughs> so since I have so much to talk about, I'm also going to try to kind of go through these things quickly. I won't spend a lot of time talking about things. But the way I'm going to structure the video is I'm going to split everything into three categories. The first one being the favorites and the love products. The second being the, you know, good products kind of meh. And lastly, the fails slash regrets are the ones that I'm just like, no, don't buy it. I actually saw Jessica Braun do this style of video with her makeup updates. She calls it the anti-first impressions. And I just love this style of that video because I've seen other makeup update videos where it's a little bit all over the place and I'm just like, ah! <laughs> I like having this structure, so I wanted to implement that into my video. That way you guys can just follow along with what's happening. Let me quit rambling here in this intro of man I talk a lot <laughs> and let's get into this little basket of goodies I'm gonna quickly separate it into its categories but I'm gonna begin with the favorites first up I have to mention this one this one is by BH Cosmetics x Daisy Marquez and this palette is just so beautiful she did an amazing job with this the color scheme that is in here there are some really fun moments where you could go really colorful experimental but you do also have your neutral moments where you could do something a little bit more wearable, which is what I love about this palette, that it's so versatile. I have honestly worked this palette into my everyday routine. I keep it front and center on my desk for easy access to be able to just work with this palette because when I look at it, I just get inspired and that's what I love with a good palette. The colors are just absolutely stunning to work with. They are really blendable. You get a lot of pigment when you pick it up. I mean, you don't have any issues with the palette, which is just amazing. Then next up I do have another palette. This is the Disney Villains Misunderstood. But this palette I was kind of debating like hmm, do I put it in the favorites or do I put it in the good pile because the only thing that is really missing from this is some good transition shades. I mean you really only have these three to work with and this really bright white shade which honestly you can really just use as a base shade. That's what it's missing from this palette, but I do think it's a really beautiful combination that they put in here. It is a lot darker because yes, it is the villain, so it is a little bit more of a selective day type of palette. It's not going to be every day for when you're going into the office, but I think it is a really gorgeous palette, and I think if you've been eyeing it, I mean, go for it, grab it. If that is your color scheme, I don't think you'll be disappointed aside from the fact that you may have to work in other palettes with it. Then I have a foundation. This is the L'Oreal Infallible Freshwear. I freaking love this foundation. It is such a beautiful full coverage with a natural matte finish. It can last honestly the entire day on me and like I mentioned also way too often, <laughs> I have a very oily skin type so for me I only have to touch up at least once between the seven to the eight hour mark and then once I powdered it down that one time I'm good to go for the rest of the night. I can wear it for another seven to eight hours and still feel really good in the foundation so highly recommend if you have not tried it yet. I mean it's worth the hype. Another one for the favorites is the Wet n Wild Ultimate Brow Micro Brow Pencil. This is a really good micro pencil and I've actually used up all of the product that's in here. It's about to be in an empties video and I'm also about to repurchase it because I really like it. It gives you a really nice precise 
point so you're able to create a lot of fine little hair strokes and it's also a really good formula where I don't feel like it's too creamy where it smushes around and it's also not too stiff where you don't get a lot of products on the brow or it's just like scraping against the skin and you're getting nothing off so it's a really good happy medium between the two the only thing that is a little bit of an issue is of course the colors <laughs> they only have four and the lightest shade is soft brown when I had my blonde hair it was a little bit iffy and I was like mm, yeah, it's making my brow a little bit too dark but now that I'm brunette you know it works I just hope they expand the colors then I have another product by Wet n Wild this is their beauty sponge and oh my gosh I will never buy a $20 sponge again this thing is so good I mean just look at the squish of this it is so incredibly soft it's not hard at all you're able to bounce in your foundation seamlessly along with your concealer and even press in powders if that's how you like to apply it I mean it's just such a good overall sponge I freaking love it as soon as that has to be replaced I will be going out and buying another one of them because it's so affordable too it's only four dollars with that price point I could buy five sponges where I could just buy one twenty dollar sponge so that says it right there then I have a product that I actually haven't done a video on on my channel it is the Fenty Beauty Sun Stalker bronzer in Shady Biz I don't know why I didn't do a video on this but I've been using this for several weeks now and it has been all that I've been using. It is such a beautiful shade. I ended up swatching out all of my bronzers that I currently have in my drawer and it is a really unique color. I didn't have anything that I could dupe it with. I ended up getting the little bronze duo kit which actually ended up being about $12 for this little mini size which I thought was pretty affordable. It is a little bit more expensive expensive if you buy the full size. I believe it's about $30, but I mean, if you love a bronzer or you love a product, you know, I think it'll be worth it. That actually wraps up the favorites. We're going to move on now to the good or the meh. And I have quite a few products to mention in this one. I have the It Cosmetics Confidence in a Foundation. And this one I did a review on, I want to say at least two months ago. It was a first impressions. I've tested it out several times since then. And the reason it's only in the good pile is because I don't think it works for oily skin. I just have to touch up way too much with this foundation. If I had any other skin type, I think it might work a little bit better because it was really beautiful full coverage. I didn't have any issues of it creasing or caking around during the day as I was wearing it. I mean, the only real issue I had was that I just got way too overly oily. It did nothing for the oil control. And another weird thing that I saw happening was there was little crystallization that almost looked like sand particles around the face. And I actually got a comment from one of you guys letting me know that a lot of other people had been seeing the same thing, which is a little bit weird. I mean, I was able to just kind of sweep it away with a powder brush but it did happen every single time I put on this foundation so I don't exactly know what that is so just wanted to mention that because it's apparently been happening to several people not just myself and that's the reason why it's just in the good pile just didn't work out for my skin type then we have some Kylie products here. This was actually my first ever Kylie Cosmetics purchase. And this is the Loose Setting Powder in Translucent. I really enjoyed it. I think it gave a really nice finish to the face. I didn't have any creasing going on. There was no flashback. I even saw a little bit of a blurring effect underneath the eyes where it looked like I had almost a filter going on. So just a really all around beautiful powder. I really enjoyed it. I did, however, do a video comparing this to the ColourPop No Filter and there were so many similarities between the two that honestly I felt like it was a dupe. So for that reason I am only keeping this in the good pile because it's also pretty gosh darn expensive. You get 0.35 of an ounce for $24. If you work that up to a full ounce it's more expensive than the Laura Mercier. I think it's just a little bit too expensive for what it is and if I could dupe it for the ColourPop that's $10 I'll use it up, but I won't repurchase it. So if that makes sense, that's why it's in the good pile. <laughs> I then have a couple palettes, and the first one is actually a face one by Cover Effects. This is their Perfector Face Palette in Light to Medium. This one came in a boxy charm, I think it was two months ago. It was the box that came just way too late, so I didn't even get a chance to film with it. I've just been using it off camera. And this palette was only good to me because of these highlight shades. They are way 
too dark for me to actually use. Let me just quickly swatch them. Here's what they look like swatched out. I mean, they're absolutely gorgeous. One's a rose gold, one's a gold. Very reflective. They are blinding as all heck. I put it on inside and I was like, oh, this is cute. But when I stepped outside and you could see it in the natural lighting, you could see that my highlight was darker than like my blush and I had very light bronzer going on. So that's why this palette is honestly just meant to me. I mean, if these two highlight shades would have been different, a little bit lighter, I would be reaching for this all the time because I love just having everything at my fingertips. But because I don't, it's just kind of like meh. I wish they would have came out with a light, a medium, a dark, a deep dark or something like that instead of just the light to medium with a medium to deep. It's not a one size fits all. Then I have an item that you guys may have been wondering about. This is the Sweet Talk palette by Colourpop. This one should be in the favorites. It should be. Except from this one shade, kills it. I absolutely hate the formula of this shade, feel free. Patchy as all heck. I cannot get it to work with me. I've tried it several different times. It's just a patchy old mess, which is really confusing to me because Colourpop has some bomb formulas. They just miss the mark with this. Other than that, I mean, I love the color scheme to this palette. It screams spring to me with all of these beautiful, vibrant corals. And the formulas inside of this palette were completely new that they hadn't done before. They had the glitter ones, and I think they had a super shock formula in here, which those work beautifully. These glitters are some of the best I've ever seen because you can apply it with whatever they have just in here, apply it with just a brush, and they will stay put on the lids the entire day. They won't crease, they will just lock itself in. I do still use this palette though, I just have to mix in another palette for deepening things up a little bit. So, I mean, if you're looking into this palette, just know that this shadow just is, is no good. I just don't, I don't like it. I don't know if I got it done because I've heard so many people raving about it. They put it in their favorites videos and I'm like, ah, maybe I got it done. And then another palette that was a little bit of a dud here. This is the Pure Festival palette that we just got in the BoxyCharm for April. And these glitters. Ooh, the formula is terrible. Absolutely awful. These two glittery shades ruin the whole palette for me. I cannot, for the life of me, get these glitters to work. I have tried it with my favorite Urban Decay primer and I just applied it on top, got super bad creasing, looked like a hot mess. I then tested it with the Pure Get A Grip primer that everyone in the comment section was like, try it with the primer you got free in the box. It wasn't a glitter insurance product, so I knew it wasn't gonna work out, but I wanted to test it for you guys, so I put it on. It's just a regular eyeshadow primer base where it feels like the Urban Decay one creased on me. I then attempted to use it with the NYX Glitter Glue, which is one of my favorite glitter primers. Mm-mm. No. Oh, bad. <laughs> it, it does not work. It does not stay put. It creases like all heck. The other shades in here are absolutely phenomenal though. So, I mean, again, you could just go like me, <laughs> but those shadows kill it for me. Now let's roll in the products that did not work for me. In this category, I actually have the most products in. So let me try to go through these kind of quickly. First up is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Matte Primer Stick. I honestly don't even think this does anything. I get a nice velvety finish to the skin when I first apply it, but that's about it. It does nothing to help keep me matte throughout the day. I don't see a mattifying effect as soon as I put on the foundation even. But this all around, I just, I would not repurchase that. I honestly don't even reach for it because I feel like it does nothing. Another Wet n Wild product, Wet n Wild is a little bit all over the place today. So this is the Mega Volume Mascara. And this one I just felt like was too liquidy for me. I had a lot of transferring from the mascara to the lid and also on the lower lash line I had a lot of it transfer underneath so it just got a little bit messy for me. I would definitely not recommend that one and I honestly don't really reach for all that much. I even have another product here by Wet n Wild. The micro brow pencil was in the beginning and that was my favorite. The pomade that was new that they came out with, I do not like this at all. As soon as I got it, it was overly dry where the product was just way too stiff. And I feel like if I am getting a new product, 
I don't want to instantly have to start dripping it with oil trying to revive it. I want the product to be creamy and then eventually dry out because you know it's a pomade. But it seriously felt like I had had this product for like a year and then was trying to go in and use it again. I did use some oil and drip it into it and try to use it, but then the formula just, it wasn't for me. I, I was not a fan. And I even have two more brow products here. The second is by Billion Dollar Brows. This was in a BoxyCharm a few months back. Did not like it. This product is so <laughs> creamy. It just gets so mushy. I hated the way my brows look when I use this. The product goes everywhere and it doesn't stay put, so just a no. And I've now seen it at TJ Maxx for $3.99. I wonder why. Then last up for the brow products at least, this is the e.l.f. Ultra Precise Brow Pencil. Oh man, this formula, no, 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 no. Way too creamy. It also slips and slides throughout the day, so I can wind up with an entire piece of my eyebrow missing. For that reason, just no. Then I have one concealer. This one is by Milani, the Conceal and Perfect. I like this as a mixing concealer, but that's the only way I'm really able to make it work. I use it underneath another one in order to kind of mix the color a little bit. It does have really good coverage, but on its own, I just feel like it settles in a little bit into fine lines. I feel like it gets a little bit creasy. If I were to run out of this product by using it in that mixing concealer method, I would not repurchase it, and that's why I'm putting it in this category. Then we have some foundations. Okay, quite a few. First up is the Wet n Wild Stick Foundation. I don't like it. There is a whole lot of oils inside of this where, you know, combining oily skin with more oils, it's just not a good combination. I get really oily with this, and I even found that some of my friends who have drier skin get a layer of oil on their foundation because of the oils that are in here. I mean, it's just an oily mess for everyone. <laughs> I don't personally enjoy it. I have also heard that all of the oils, how many times can I say oils, do clog the pores, so you have to be a little bit careful if you are consistently using this, if you do like it, just if you notice you're starting to break out, you know, stop using the foundation stick and see if it clears up because it's possible that these are clogging the pores. Another issue I was having with this was that it was very hit or miss for me. The first time I tried it, I felt like it applied really nicely, but as the more I kept using it, the more I kept finding that some days it looked textured, some days it didn't, some days it was textured, some days it was, it was just all over the place. So, just didn't like it. I'm honestly gonna give that away. Most of these foundations I'm about to mention, I'm gonna give away. Then I have one more stick foundation. This is the Milani Conceal and Perfect Foundation Stick. And this one, I mean, it's so tricky for us oily skin type people to find a good foundation stick. Most of them just don't work. A lot of them just leave us really oily, which this one again does. I also have some issues of texture. And on top of that, I have the foundation breaking apart in certain areas of the face throughout the days. So I just don't like it and I don't reach for it. Then I have one foundation by Makeup Revolution. This is their matte base pore blurring full coverage foundation. And this one I just found I have a lot of texture whenever I use it. I can't get it right. I don't know what it is. I've seen a lot of people actually rave about this foundation, but every time I put it on, it just looks so textured and I hate the way my foundation looks. So it's, it's a pass for me. We made it to the end with the very last product. This is the Revlon Candid Natural Finish Anti-Pollution Foundation. And this is only meant for oily skin. Like, if you have dry skin, combo skin, stay as far away from this as possible because this will remove any ounce of hydration. I honestly almost debated putting this in the good pile just because it could be really good for my oily skin type people. I mean, it remains looking really matte throughout the day. I felt like at the end of the day, you know, it looked really good. But I hate the feeling of this the first hour or two because it's so drying. I feel like there's better options out there that won't do that and make you feel uncomfortable for the first two hours. So I don't reach for it for that reason. But that was the last product I had to share with you guys. So that is going to wrap up my first ever after the first impressions makeup updates. 
Oh man, I had so much product to talk to you guys about, but I really hope that you guys enjoy this video and me telling you guys about some products that maybe you haven't heard me mention again and now you get closure. <laughs> what happened to those products? What do I think? So I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please don't forget to hit that like button, subscribe to my channel, and hit that little bell button. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye guys.